It was like a propaganda machine pretty yep. much for the Jets and for everything they got cooking. And then there was obviously a loud crowd that was like, can't wait to see the Jets do what the Jets always do, which is blow it. Now the Jets didn't, but an Achilles on the fourth play ruins it all. Now we're seeing them not only beat the Eagles, but how that defense has gone against Josh Allen, what? Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts. What? It's like this team was built to win a Super Bowl if they had a quarterback that could take them there. Now Zach's not losing games, which is great, but is Aaron legitimately coming back? What are you hearing from behind the scenes? Because that video we saw of him throwing, he looked very comfortable, Shefty. Well, let's be very clear. Look, he's been on your show. He's on your show regularly. And it, he's made it very clear that it's his mission to be back as soon as he possibly can. So we're going to take him for his word that he's pushing and doing everything that he can to get back as soon as possible. When you see the images of him on the field throwing the football like that, it raises the hope of everybody that roots for that team and really around football that he can make it back sooner rather than later. I think what he's trying to do is historic and unprecedented. I think the soonest we've seen a player come back was Cam Akers. He played running back. He did it in about four and a half, five months. Aaron did it on September 11th, right? So for, we just extrapolate. Let's say it takes him four months, Pat, four months, which would be incredible. October, November, December, January 11th. I Again, you know, could he do it in three months? I've never heard of that. I know he's trying things and doing things that have never been done, and I wouldn't put anything past the guy, and I'd love to see him do it. I just think that would be wild. Yeah. Like, but again, when you see him, that raises the hope. As soon as I saw him, I'm like, oh, everybody's going to be asking me now. That's all I'm going to be getting. Ew. First question. Is he coming back soon? Is, can he make it back soon? Like, as soon as you saw those images, that was the deal. Well, he looks casual. You know, you talk about the running back coming back in four and a half, five months. Like, there is a world where you park his ass in shotgun yep. and you just kind of let him do his thing. Now, he's going to have to move, obviously going to have to be able to protect himself on a football field, and they won't let him out there until he does it. But how calm, no pain at all. There was not even a, no, a no grimace way. on his face. I guess those Dolphins, remember, yeah, he's been hanging out Achilles yeah. over the Dolphins that have been doing their thing. Let's dive into some other injuries that took place yesterday. Wild day in the NFL, especially whenever it comes to injuries. Let's start in San Francisco. Uh, Debo Samuel shoulder, I guess they're saying he's going to be okay. Trent Williams' ankle happens early. He has a boot on. He ends up coming back. This one right here, though, Florio last night said they're being very discreet about CMC's oblique. Does that mean it's more serious, less serious? What are we hearing about Christian McCaffrey, Shefty? It, it's not that they're being discreet. It's that that's the way that Christian McCaffrey operates with injuries. He's like a military operative that doesn't ever want to share anything and doesn't want anyone to know anything <laughs> about what's wrong with him. So it's going to be difficult to tell. Look, we know he's dealing with an oblique. I'm going to guess that he's going to see some specialists today. I don't think that he or they know right now whether he'll miss a game, two games, any games at all. I think they're trying to figure out exactly what that oblique injury is right now. And again, that, that's part of the problem on some of these injuries is, you know, everybody says they're okay. And then they're not once they get the MRI or they go me to spend it. Early injury updates to me, you know, it's a, it's a little premature on these things. Let's wait till we get some more clarity and they can figure out what's wrong with them. Christian McCaffrey, again, I think we'll be seeing some people today to figure out if and how much time he'll be missing due to this oblique injury. And yes, he will, as he always has, guard these things with his life because he doesn't want anyone to know anything about his body and where to target anything. What's the fear? Is there? Do you know the panic meter or fear level, though, so we can at least get a little bit of a heads up? Because that, <laughs> that, team, that team without Christian McCaffrey... Buddy, yeah. they're, 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 like not good, not, not good news. Now's not the time to be losing Christian McCaffrey, especially with how great he's been playing. Well, they, they've they always been good. They were good without him, but they are all world with him. And so I think, you know, they could survive and they could lean on Elijah Mitchell and Jordan Mason and, uh, and Tyrion Davis-Price. They'll figure it out and make it work, but the offense wouldn't operate and function at the same level without the guy that arguably was the MVP of the first five games of the season. He's incredible. So they have to figure out what's wrong with him. The, the fear factor, I, I can't give you one because they're trying to figure it out. Okay. So um, I don't know what it is right now. My, it's an oblique. He came back in. He couldn't finish. Not a good sign. And 
so I, I guess there's some question as to whether he'll be ready for Monday night at the very least. How about that? Okay. All right. Okay. Quite, there is some question. Huh. That is a little. Right. Fear's about a six or seven right now. Yeah, good. But we don't have any. We don't have any <laughs> results. Okay. We appreciate that. Let's move to another team that had got upset yesterday by the Jets. Lane Johnson with an ankle. That's a big deal. Uh, I do yep. believe. What do we know about that injury? And have we got any updates on Big Lane? I was told last night it's not serious. Now, again, it's very easy for somebody else to say when somebody else is dealing with a high ankle that it's not serious. Limped off the field. The guy is an extraordinarily tough guy. Plays offensive line. It's not like he has to run around like A.J. Brown or uh, DeAndre Swift. Could he miss time? Absolutely. Uh, would he miss as much time as a guy at another position? Probably not. Um, we'll see how that goes out. But the text I got last night was it was better than they thought. And they hope he's going to be okay, and we'll see. Okay, let's shout Lane. He's a dog. Yep. He'll be back. Uh, quarterback uh, for the Las Vegas Raiders. He leaves, ends up in an ambulance to a hospital with a back injury. He yep. obviously looked like he was in a lot of pain. Do we have any update on Jimmy G? And uh, is this Hoyer's team for the foreseeable future? What I was told last night was they took him there for precautionary measures. Now, I, you know, it seems a little weird to me that you get in an ambulance to go to a local hospital for precautionary measures, but that is how it was described to me. Obviously, he had to leave the game, looked uncomfortable leaving the field. Brian Hoyer came on and helped lead them to victory against his former team. And, you know, Jimmy just has a series of things that unfortunately have gone wrong for him. And so if it's a back and it's a veteran and he's at the hospital, even for precautionary reasons, uh, they're running tests, they're speaking to people. We'll see whether that translates into missing more time. Don't know yet. Uh, but, again, they was supposedly just precautionary. Very scary situation here in Indy. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Shefty, I think it was you that uh, tweeted that there's a chance that Anthony Richardson, they might end up just shutting him down for the whole season. I think he got, like, five different opinions on uh, his situation. What's the likelihood that that actually happens, especially given what happened Sunday in Jacksonville? And when might we get an idea or, like, an actual decision on that? I think we'll get one here in the next couple of days. And Shane Steichen last week said that one of the options was season-ending surgery. And so we'll see whether that is one of the options that they go forward with. You know, what's interesting here, and I've gone back and forth with some medical specialists on this, right? Initially, it was reported to be a grade uh, three sprain, but you wouldn't have to do surgery on a grade three sprain. So if they're going to do surgery, then why are they doing that? Hmm. Was there something wrong in the shoulder before? So there's a lot of medical questions that, quite honestly, my background is not trained in uh -huh. the expertise of what's wrong with the shoulder and the ligaments and th grade threes and grade twos. So I can only speak on a layman's common person level to say that if it was a grade three sprain, then he wouldn't ordinarily need shoulder surgery. Um, and, and, and they also keep saying that the tests came at better at came out better than they thought hmm. that the shoulder injury wasn't as bad that it, that it might be just a grade two and if it was grade two Ooh. then why are they operate so the whole huh. thing is a little bit medicine, but but here's what i will say also i think that the colts are being intentionally very deliberate is it the colts because, or because i thought the way it was reported is like anthony richardson is potentially choosing or opting to do the season ending surgery it's the colts i, I or think they're they're i think they're doing this together and i think the colts are being very deliberate because they're haunted by the memories of another injured quarterback and making sure that everything went well there. And sometimes with Andrew, I think maybe they felt like, okay, we rushed him back or we didn't have the answers we wanted. And I think whatever happened and transpired between them and their former quarterback, I believe has influenced the very slow, methodical approach that they're using here to make sure that they don't rush into judgment on anything and that they get everything as right as they possibly can. I can respect that. I honestly can. It does scare the hell out of me, though, if he opts for the surgery. Because the way he was reading is like Anthony was choosing to basically do a potential season-ending surgery, and it's like, damn, already? Like, hey, I'm out of here? And then Gardner Minshew goes and has his worst game he's had as an Indianapolis Colt, but he was jacked up. He was jacked yeah, up. Sure, yeah. Playing his old team Very down there, that's okay. Up, yeah. So it's like, that is a big worry. That, that was a yeah. big worry as I read it. Like, he's choosing to end his season? Or? I, I think they're in this together and trying to figure out what the best course of action is. And, 
you know, it, it, he had a tough few beginnings here um, where four of the five games he didn't finish because of injuries, various injuries, four or five. So it was a tough start, and I think they want to make sure he's right. Whether that necessitates surgery or not, we'll see. No. <sighs> All the tests have come back negative, though, after all of these things, four out of the well, five. Well, they say they came back better than they thought. That That's why it, it's mm. a little odd to me. Yeah, but it's the just... knee one, the first the first one was a knee, came back, test negative, didn't miss anything. Then there was, uh, I believe, the, the, the concussion. concussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he played a series, I think, after yeah. that, and then he went out. And then now it's this, and it's like oh, the yeah. test were negative, came back better than we thought. It's like, damn, what the hell? We hope, hey, AR, hope you're all right. Good luck, AR. Hope you're all right. Hey, I'm scared to death, though. We're just choosing to end the season, week six. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the guy had like four touchdowns in two weeks. It got to be something. I never, heard, I can't even remember somebody getting a surgery for AC. Sprain? Sprain or. It, that's what know. I'm saying. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. It's, it's so yeah. soft. Yeah, yeah weird, I, I'd say. Yeah. I'd say very, 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 very weird. And then the Deshaun Watson, he's back next week, we assume. Is that what we're thinking? Are they going to buy or I, they, they think there's a chance. I'm not telling you he's going to be back. We'll see. They had, they're they coming off the bye. They played San Francisco. They ruled him out on Friday. And the way it was described to me by a few different people was he's got a chance. Doesn't mean he plays next week. He might not, right? But he's dealing with a subscapularis, if I pronounced that correctly. Not a baby. Subscapularis muscle in his shoulder that basically prevents him from getting the power he needs to drive the football. And so it's a situation. Oh, by the way, I love this. You know, it just tells you, Pat, how heavily watched your show is because I'm getting a little medical update on Anthony Richardson. Here we go. Uh, grade three, grade three could warrant surgery. Doesn't always need it. <laughs> Depends on what exactly the problem is. Grade two is where it means the ligaments aren't totally torn and surgery is more puzzling. But if he has some specific issues related to past history, his anatomy, something he might end up with a surgical procedure. And, of course, you want to find out more at that point. It's confusing, but uh, hopefully we'll get some clarity. So somebody's watching and somebody's texting me that. Somebody smart's so, watching, which yeah. we could have never expected. <laughs> what you know, somebody had the answer, like, that's that's surprise of the year there. Right about that. But anyways, that sounds Wait, like a dog. You know, we get, we, get, we get medical updates and we get pronunciations of names as the program unfolds in real time. Program. That's how this show works. Yeah, it's live TV, baby. That's <laughs> live TV. AR, we hope you're okay, though. Anyways, Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Chef, just future reference, it's uh, program, not program. But uh, there's a program. pretty program. big... Program, program, program. program. There, there you program. go. Yep, nailed it. Uh, there's a big story coming out of New England, and it is not about how bad the football team is, even though that is the truth. But Bill Belichick, allegedly on the hot seat. Is this something that you are hearing? I know Robert Kraft has come out and people are saying it is not something that he has completely shied away from. But do you see Bill Belichick getting fired? And if he is going to get fired, is it GM and coach Belichick getting fired? Is it GM getting fired or is it coach <clears throat> getting fired? <laughs> well, <clears throat> first of all, I think he's treated differently as he should be than any other coach, you know, on a Monday or a Sunday night after a season ends, you know, we'll get three, four, five, six firings of head coaches. And I just don't think you're going to get one of these statements on the last regular season game that Sunday night where the Patriots have fired Bill Belichick. I, I just don't think it works like that when there's the history and the accomplishments and the resumes uh, and the relationship that there's been between he and Robert Kraft. And so this situation is treated entirely differently. And they're having the type of season that's going to lend those types of questions and everybody's going to wonder exactly how the situation is going to play out because nobody thinks that they can continue just like this wow. with the team reeling in a way that we're not used to seeing, with the offense struggling in a way we're not used to seeing, what? with the team performing in a way we're not used to seeing. This is so abnormal for a team that has been the best team, arguably, in all of sports yeah. over the last couple of decades. So Bill is, I think, 71, 72 years old, and everybody wants to see change, and he has been the guy at the top. Look, I just think that there are going to be some hard conversations that naturally occur between he and Robert Kraft, and where those go, I don't know. Is Bill going to want out? Are they going to want him out? Are they going to decide to mutually end it together? Like, there are a whole bunch of questions about how it will go on. But 
Was that Robert Kraft texting you right there? Was that Robert Kraft texting you right there? Yeah, he he said he he said, "Yo, we'll get to this in due time." <laughs> this is how we work. We bring up topics, and then people can text in like first time caller, long time listener. Yeah, kind of thing, you know? we love that. Hey, if that's what our show becomes, we are completely okay uh -huh, with that. Cool. Yeah. Uh, but Teddy Bruschi said something fascinating. Teddy Bruschi yeah. was like. You think Bill Belichick next to him and it was unbelievable. Yeah. He was like, You think Bill Belichick wants to play these games? This isn't what Bill Belichick. Like, yeah, yeah. Everybody's talking about them firing Bill Belichick. And it's like, does Bill Belichick want to continue to do this down this path there? But he still has that head coaching wins record, right? That is within grasp, yeah. we would assume. So would he is there a world in that you can see where he ends up the head coach of another team? Like is that something? Well, you know, the thing with him is and that's what I was saying with Teddy. We were talking before the show yesterday, and we knew this topic was going to come up. And, and Teddy said to me before the show what he did. He's like, oh, you know, maybe it's time for Bill to step away. And I said, his life is all about football. Like, what? I, I can't see him not being involved in one way or another. He just lives it, loves it, um, and it's part of his soul. Come to Green so, Bay, Bill. Jeez. I, I, yeah. Well yeah, I, I don't know. So, so what does he do? Like, if if he's not coaching the New England Patriots, like I don't see Bill Belichick retiring to go play golf in Florida. I don't. We'd make him happen. an offer. I'd make yeah. him an offer to join this show every single day. Obviously, <laughs> he, he, he'd be outstanding. I he'd think be so. a, you know, the morning of the Super Bowl, uh, the year after they they won their first one in two thousand one, the next year whoever played in the Super Bowl, I don't think they were playing. And Bill Belichick wrote an op ed piece in the New York Times counseling the coaches in the Super Bowl, about what they would experience if they won or lost the game. And it was one of the great op-ed columns that I've read. And it showed a side of him that I think a lot of people don't know or realize exists. He is very thoughtful. He is very... He did that uh, top 100 with funny. Rich Eisen. He yeah. did that top 100 with Rich Eisen. Fantastic, it was right? fantastic. fantastic. Yeah, that was so Automatically that, that, assumed. That's him. But he's going to get but that he, coaching record, right? Isn't that what we all think he's, he's coaching yeah. this for, is to go get that head coaching you. wins record? And it's like, is there a chance, it sounds like there is a chance where this could happen, where Kraft and he decide it's no longer right here, it is worn out, and he potentially, because the only way to get that record is he has to be a head coach Somewhere else. And how many years do, until he gets to like 3-4, right? Yeah, three or four years. He's at 299 right now. I believe it is in the 340s, 330s. But uh, I always... No, no, I, 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 I think he's like 17 wins away. Something to Yeah, the combined of regular season and playoffs. But there's also the record where it's just regular season. But to what Teddy Bruschi said, we talked to Michael Lombardi every week. And Michael Lombardi has been reiterating for a couple of years now actually bill loves the process so i do understand the yeah he plays for super bowls and division championships and all and all right. that but he, michael lombardi has also been very adamant about the fact that he loves the day-to-day -day a lot time. of this bill this year a lot, lot of that a yeah. lot of this bill hey, let me, let me tell you something. I, what, hey pat what was the worst record you ever had on a season with the Colts? two and 14 got us andrew the, those those kinds of years are just brutal Damn. and miserable to get through. It is no fun for anybody for weeks and months at a time, right? Like, they are off. I've covered, I remember covering the Broncos back in 1991 or two. They were like 4 and 12. Oh. And it was just, it was just miserable. It just, it's horrendous to be around something like that, right? Well, everybody thinks they're going to get fired. Every player is trying not to put out bad film. Even the chefs think they're going to get fired. It's just a miserable existence, and I could see how Bill right. would certainly hate it. But it is a fascinating future because he is GM. He is head coach. GM Bill has not done great over, what, the last – Two years. Two, five years. Uh, head coach Bill has not done great. He, remember, he put the special teams coordinator yeah. and the defense coordinator mm -hmm. and offensive coordinator last year. So it's just like, G wow. G GM Bill has hurt Coach Bill. Coach Bill is Coach Bill. Coach Bill is arguably the greatest coach of all time. But GM Bill has hurt Coach Bill because they just don't have the same level of talent that other teams do right now for whatever reason. Huh. It's interesting. I'm excited to see how Robert Kraft handles it because, remember, he has been quoted at one point saying – uh, I got to go fly back to New England to deal with the biggest asshole in my life, yeah. yep. Bill Belichick, allegedly. Remember, that was when he was coming down an elevator in Vegas, I think. Uh -huh. Somebody quoted him saying that. That was when the whole uh, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, whose side is what. That is all lies. I'm just saying Kraft <laughs> and Bill have had a long relationship together mm -hmm. that has done a lot of this. How will this go? We shall see. Ty has a question for you, Shefty. Shefty, yes, uh, so not, not just Anthony Richardson, but what, what's going on with um, 
Trevor Lawrence. It didn't really look like his his knee injury was that bad yesterday, but then now a lot of there's a lot of blowback for Press Taylor be, for leaving him in there or kind of hanging him out to dry. Uh, it didn't look terrible, but is that a situation where he might miss a couple weeks now? Well, they played this week, short week, Thursday night. So mm. there's the first issue that comes up. He was going to have an MRI today. I have not gotten the results of the MRI. And until we see what that MRI says, it, it's hard to say how much time he'd miss. But he was hobbled. I didn't like how he went down. He grabbed that knee right away. It, it didn't look great, but he was able to get up and finish the game. So that was encouraging. Uh, they don't believe it's anything overly concerning right now. But again, we've heard that before. You just want to see how these things go on the MRI. I think what I would say right now, there's some concern about that, Nate, and let's see how the MRI goes. Tone has a question for you. Shefty, we are now two weeks away from the trade deadline, and after yesterday, there's a lot of teams probably looking in the mirror and saying, hey, this season might be a wash and maybe we could get something worth a guy. Is there any buzz yet as far as potential players on the move in the next two weeks before the trade deadline? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think if you are the Denver Broncos, you've gotten calls because teams – essentially think that you're going to be giving away players. And and Denver's not going to give away anybody, but Denver's going to listen on just about anybody. And if somebody wants to offer draft picks uh, to a player, then at that point in time, uh, Denver will be willing to listen on just about anybody and make a trade if there's fair value. They're not just going to give away anybody. I think Carolina would deal some people. Hey, let's stay in Denver uh-huh. real quick. Let's stay in Denver real quick. There's rumblings, and I know you've heard them. <laughs> Peer of yours, colleague of yours. Defense coordinator for Broncos, is there going to be a change over there, mate? Well, I don't think they're doing anything right now, but I think at the end of the season, anything is possible. Yeah, they're not looking to do anything right now. Sexy Rexy um, Ryan, is that is that who you're hearing as well? Oh, Ooh. no, re, re, no. In fact, uh, Rex, no, Rex is not going to Denver right now. Oh, That's not- come on. Damn. <laughs> I had a couple of people tell me that this morning. There was a chance that he was going to get a, approached or targeted by them. And you know, you know who my source is there? On that? Who's that? Rex. Oh. <laughs> we, were talk- we were talking about it yesterday as we were watching the games. <laughs> right, He's not going to Denver right now. You know, by the way, and I said to him, I go, do you ever stop and think about this? Like, he was one of two finalists for the Broncos defensive coordinator job. I said, that could be you there right now. You could be going through this season instead of sitting here eating cheeseburgers with me, watching football on the big screens here in Bristol, Connecticut. And I think he's very thankful that he's in the spot he is. Uh, I don't think that the coaching bug is out of him. I wouldn't be shocked if one day he did it again. He loves that. Like, coaches love to coach. The coaches who love it, they love it, Pat, right? That's why, like, Bill Belichick, football, like I said, is a part of what he does. And Rex loves to coach. Could he go back to that one day? That would not surprise me. But right now, his job is with ESPN, and uh, he does a great job with that. And so I love working with him as a teammate. I love the fact that there is a chance that behind the scenes people are like, how the hell do we get Rex Ryan out of eating cheeseburgers with Sheffield? <laughs> yeah. mm. And how do we get him back into coaching? <laughs> saying, be tough. He's he saying, he where are these people getting me going to Denver? I'm not going to Denver. I'm like, okay, well, there you go. Well, I think the thing is, like, they can afford anybody over there because there's no salary cap for coaches, obviously. So, yeah, but, but why would he leave ESPN TV land right now to go jump in on, what's their record, one in five? Yep. Yeah, Why that'd would be you tough. Do that? That'd be. I didn't understand that one either, as well. As uh, to be clear, did not understand that. But they're thinking that Denver is going to be targeting him heavily, though. And I'm well. That 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 may be a different story. But he's not going there right now. After the season, will there be teams that go to him and talk to him about a job? That there are almost every year. Would Denver be amongst them? Why wouldn't it be? He was one of two finalists last year. Is he going to go to Denver? After the season, I, I, I can't speak from. I don't know that he's gonna, but he's gonna consider all these coaching offers. Got it. And he's very happy doing what he does. Oh yeah. He's and great. you know what? Like, like with anything, with anybody, if somebody wants you enough, they make you feel it. So if somebody makes him feel wanted enough, okay. in whether that's financially or in another way. Could I see him going back to coaching one day? That's always been the case. That might be what yeah. this is. Yeah. Hey, oh. we want, we're in on the Rex sweepstakes. I cut you <laughs> yes. off there. You talked about the Broncos being uh, for sale for sure if players before the trade deadline. I think you were going to say Carolina. I don't know. Carolina would be would be sellers. Um, look, there are teams that are going to lose games now that thought they were going to be competitive 
Like Arizona, I think, would listen on a lot of players and be willing to deal mm. certain guys. We could go through the list. You just look at any team right now with one win. Uh, New England. You feel the prospects of the season, and you just say, okay, well, would, would they be sellers? And I think, you know, for the right price, any team would move somebody just about. Got it. They, okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, I could see Arizona dealing players. I could see Carolina dealing players. Right, this is Chicago. Look, look at yeah. Chicago. All right, we get it. Chicago. Right, sweet, sweet. Absolutely Chicago. All right, let's, put that. I'm not bad. But look, okay, we only got a couple of minutes. We're done with you just saying, yeah, the teams that stink are going to be sellers. There's we no know. information coming. There Darius, go. Darius has a question about tonight, though. We got to pivot to this evening's Monday Night Football yes. game. Two yes, great go, teams Darius. playing. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, what do we got? I know uh, Eckler, I saw he was completely off of the injury report going into tonight. Is he completely healthy? And then Justin Herbert's finger. Is it all the way back? I know uh, it was an ugly injury there, but uh, yeah. any other injuries Herbert, tonight, uh, Cowboys and yeah, Chargers. Uh, Eckler's off the report. Now, again, are they going to give him his full workload? I, I don't know about that, but he's going to be involved heavily. Of course, he's a tremendous running back, and they're going to use him quite a bit, and he feels ready to go. And Austin Eckler knows his importance to the team and the fantasy community, so uh, <laughs> he'll be out there doing his thing. Justin Herbert, I'm curious about that. Like I said to you, if that injury had occurred and they had a game last week, would he have been able to play and been completely unaffected by a dislocated finger on his non-throwing hand? He's worn a glove at practice, so he's going to be out there. He's going to be playing. I just don't know how much of an impact or influence, if any, that injury will have for him. So we'll see about that. All right. Well, what else should we be looking for tonight that we haven't brought up? Anything? Well, I think when teams get embarrassed the way that the Cowboys did last week, for them to come out and play two stink bomb games in a row would shock me. Like, I just think they're going to come out tonight and we're going to get the Dallas Cowboys A game. And so we'll see how that goes. And uh, Allegedly, I've seen a stat, uh, Cowboys 9-1 and one after a loss since 2021 with Big Mike McCoy. Well, there you go. Yeah. So that's there a hell go. of a stat we shall see. Shefty, we appreciate the hell out of you. We'll watch you on TV tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, senior NFL insider for ESPN, the man who knows it all, Adam Schefter. Yay. 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 All right, we're about to hit a hard out here in this first hour. Got a lot of information, but next to none as well. Yep. Yeah, you know, there were good. some things where he was dancing around, like the trade thing. Like, yeah, if your team stinks, they're yep. going to be sellers. Mm -hmm. But I do believe the trade deadline for the NFL is heating up yeah. over the mm -hmm. last couple of years as the NBA has done the same. People have seemingly got more eager and excited to make plays than they have in the past, as opposed to just going to the dance with the people you have now. A lot of teams say, you know what, we're like two pieces away. Let's go ahead and try to make this happen. I like that. It's going to heat up, we think. And he says, the teams that suck are certainly for sale. <laughs> Not a bad little stat.